What is an IIFE and why might you use it? So IIFE stands for Immediately Invoked Function Expression and it's actually pronounced IFE. And to understand why you might use it, let's look at an example. So this example has two JavaScript files, one called main.js and the other one called other.js. And in main.js we have a global variable called thing and I've made that point to an object with key hello and value main and we're just printing that out underneath. And if you look at other.js, it also has a global variable called thing. The object is slightly different, it's hello other, and again we're printing it out. And the index.html, which pulls all of these together, first loads the main.js and it then loads the other.js. So let's have a look at what this prints out. So let's run the file. And there you go. So first thing it does is it prints out the console.log from the main.js. Then it prints out the console.log from the other.js. And the reason it does it in that order is because that's the order in which the files are loaded from index.html. So the JavaScript engine will first load main.js and then it will console log out from there. And then it will load other.js and console log from there. But the question to ask then is, well, since we used two global variables, one in main called thing and one in other called thing, what's left in the global namespace? When, if I were to type thing in here, what's it going to print out? And the answer is it's printing out the thing from other.js. And the reason it's doing that is because when the index.html file loaded, it loaded main.js and inside there, main.js created its own thing variable, thing global variable. But then when other.js loaded, other.js created its own thing.thing.js variable, which overwrote main.js's thing variable. And really that's what we're left with. We're left with the thing global variable that was defined in other.js. So we've kind of got kind of two problems, I suppose. One is that we're just polluting the global namespace, the global window object, with variables from whatever files that we're loading in. And the other thing that's happening is that we probably, or we might be overwriting different global variables from different files, depending on files that we're loading in. And the behavior and the effect of that is really hard to predict. Maybe the rest of our application depended on the thing variable being hello main. It didn't realize that other.js is going to change it and our entire application stops working. So how can we solve this problem? Well, there's a couple of things we've learned so far which might be able to help us. And one of them is what are the different scopes in JavaScript? We've got global scope, which is what you're seeing right now with anything that you define outside of a function exists in global scope. But then we've also got function scope. And anything you define inside the scope of a function only exists inside that function block. So we can use that information to do something like this. So in other.js, if I wrote function other scope and I stuck our code in there and then I called other scope. So the code within here is still going to be executed when other.js loads. So now if I refresh the page, okay, we've still got the same functionality as we expect. So the main.js loaded and we still console log that line from there but also the other.js loaded and the other scope function was called. So we again console logged it out. But the main difference here is now if we look at the thing object, the global thing variable, it's actually now pointing to the thing object from main.js. So it's pointing to this one because this is the only one that's remaining in global scope after both those files are loaded. So in other.js, the thing object is not available outside the scope of the other scope function. So it's not available here. And that's cool. That's one way in which we can stop variables from leaking out to global scope in different files. But it's actually quite a lot of code to write. Well, quite a lot of code to write for a JavaScript developer. And there's actually a more succinct and concise way of implementing this. So what we can do is instead of naming a function, you just use an anonymous function. And then we wrap that anonymous function in some brackets. So we make it invocable. And then we invoke that function by just calling it the same way as we would call, well, any function really with just the brackets and then just end it with a semicolon. So all we're doing is we're calling this function. These brackets basically are how we call this function. Okay. And that's what, what this really means. That's why this is an immediately invoked function. So as soon as JavaScript reads this line, it parses it in. And then when it reaches this point, it goes, ah, actually, I'm going to call this function straight away. OK, 
Okay, so that's an immediately invoked function expression. So now when I refresh the page, let me clear the line. Now when I refresh the page, we're getting the same functionality as we expect. And same as before, the thing object is actually the thing object from the main.js. But really, we never want any global variables being set up from any of the files that we're including in. So what we would normally do is we would wrap all the content of all the files that we're including in in an immediately invoked function expression. So just like this. So that let me now run the project again. The body of those functions are being called from main.js and other.js. But if I was to try and now access thing from the global scope, it's actually not defined. So that's the behavior that we want. We don't really want any global or pseudo global variables that are declared inside any of the files, any of the JavaScript files that we're including in to leak out into our application's global scope. There's a couple of other examples of when an immediately invoked function expression is actually useful. We're going to cover one of them in the next section on closures.